Well, for a little bit more on this, uh, we're now joined uh, by SABC News reporter Kani Mapanga, who's uh, at the Indaba Hotel in Four Ways, which is just north of Johannesburg. Kani, thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us. It's been quite a dramatic few days. Has this conference started in earnest finally? Mm. Uh, good evening to you, Peter, and the viewers at home. Uh, well, I can confirm that the conference is well underway since 4 p.m. today. Um, as you may know, the conference was expected to begin yesterday on Friday the 27th. However, this issue of outstanding disputes uh, was, was haunting the conference from actually beginning. Uh, this morning, uh, as you've heard, uh, Gauteng ANC Chair David Makura describe the scenes here as a war zone. What we saw outside the Ndaba Hotel Conference Center was a heavily armed security presence there. Um, that matches the image of what he described as a war zone. These uh, disqualified branches showed up to the gates of the Ndabo Hotel, which halted um, this, this conference from starting until 4 p.m. today. These disputes, however, seem to still be in the air, as the steering committee did give the green light for the regional conference to go ahead. However, it didn't provide any resolutions to some of these concerns. So it's still not out the way whether this conference is sitting may be uh, challenged uh, ahead of time. Uh, but we will continue to uh, monitor the situation as of now. The process is going ahead smoothly after some introspection uh, from the ANC members in the, the, the venue when they talked a little bit about what this conference is about. It isn't about divisions. It isn't about factionism. It's about getting to the grassroots level and serving communities again. We had seen disruptions in other elective conferences in other parts of the country. And uh, in the days leading up to this one, the uh, leadership uh, in Ekuruleni were selling a story that uh, no, things are going to go smoothly. Did this come as a surprise then, or is it something that they should have anticipated given the delays that had occurred in the weeks leading to this? Well, Peter, it could have been anticipated because these disputes are a long-standing issue. It's not something that emerged yesterday. This, these disputes have been discussed for weeks, and they have been the reason behind why there have been some postponements behind the regional conference. However, this is a heavily secure venue. Um, one can assume that this conference can proceed without any interruptions. We understand that the delegates that are here are the delegates that are supposed to be here, and the disqualified delegates are not here. Um, so we expect for them to conclude without any interruptions interruptions. As, as I've repeated before, this venue is highly, highly secure. So I don't see any disruptions happening um, in the future. All right. You know, the ANC has been accused of uh, being highly factionalized. Uh, these branches that were left out, do they belong to a faction or was it just random? Well, these uh, disgruntled members were accusing uh, different factions of different things. Mm -hmm. We do know that um, Zondile Masina and Dr. Klagas are both vying for the top position. What we do understand is that some of those disgruntled members that were outside were aligned to uh, Klagas, and they alleged that they were being excluded because of to maintain or manipulate a certain outcome in this conference. However, it has been confirmed that they are disqualified. The steering committee has given the regional conference a green light to go ahead. And it appears that the delegates are here, are the delegates that will participate in this regional conference that will continue until Sunday. All right. So what's uh, next on the agenda? We heard opening statements and they were quite fiery, not just from Makura, but from the uh, uh, regional chairperson as well. Uh, right, so currently right now, delegates are on a dinner break. Uh, we understand that they'll be going back into the venues for a closed session, uh, dealing with credentials and other issues. And we expect for that to continue until the early hours of Sunday morning. Uh, we will be able to update uh, the, the public further from 9 a.m. tomorrow when the delegates return for some of the open sessions. So what did Mzwandile Masina say? I heard a little bit earlier on he was talking about how he felt that the people of Ekuruleni were not going to be served properly, but didn't quite explain why they lost ground in the first place. Mm. Well, 
Mzani Masina, in his um, address, did uh, concede that some of the things that uh, Gauteng ANC Chair David Makura had, his assessment of what was going on in the region was valid. Um, he also noted that there were a lot of disputes, a lot of divisions, quite glaring divisions in the Ekuruleni region, but he agreed himself that this is about renewing the ANC, rebuilding and re uniting as the ANC for a united outcome in the regional conference and bringing it back to the grassroots so they can address some of their election losses and and rebuild that trust deficit that they've 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 garnered in the Ekuruleni communities which resulted in them losing the metros. What is conventional wisdom saying in terms of whether he'll be able to retain his position or not? Well Delegates are keeping mum about those details, uh, Peter. We will have to wait for that outcome when it arrives. Mm. But uh, we don't have any sense or idea with the delegates that have made it through who, who they're going to be endorsing. Yeah. The only thing we know now is that the ANC Youth League in the region publicly stated that they would be endorsing Klangaza, but it's yet to be seen where they could possibly yeah. be kingmakers in this conference or not. But these results will unfold tomorrow and we'll be able to update you accordingly with accurate information as to yeah. what exactly is happening in the regional conference. In some of the other electoral conferences, we were hearing things like a third way, uh, that they were finding compromises actually to um, try and bring the party together. Is there a sense at all, apart from talking about unity, that is there genuine action towards that? Well, what I can say is that in that moment of introspection where the Gauteng NC chair, um, David Makura, you know, really lashed out, didn't mince his words, and really address some of these issues of the elective conference, stating, listen, these conferences are not about voting. They are bigger than that. They're not about leadership positions. And the ANC is starting to look a bit unfamiliar, and they need to bring it back to unity. So that people are, when people come into the ANC, they're there to serve. They're not there for self-serving interests. They're there to renew and rebuild. And it seemed that those words did resonate with the delegates, and the delegates seemed to be calm. The mood here, as I explained earlier, is, a, is much, much calmer than what we saw earlier this morning and appears that this program is going to move smoothly and everybody is on the same page as to what needs to be done in this conference. Remind us why those branches were excluded in the first instance. It's unclear at this stage um, why these branches were, were, were excluded. The allegations were uh, that, that they qualified and then all of a sudden they were disqualified. And the allegations from them is that they were disqualified to suit certain outcomes. But this information has not yet been confirmed and the steering committee has not gone into detail about these disputes. So as we know, these disputes are still in the air. They're yet to be proven exactly how this process was of them being disqualified happened and whether these allegations of, of these conferences trying to be manipulated or allegedly hijacked are true or not. But however, tomorrow we'll, start, we'll be able to start getting a sense yeah. of what exactly those issues were and whether this, uh, this conference will be legitimate or whether it will continue or they'll be able to successfully conclude tomorrow. But as we know, they've gotten the green lights. They are going ahead with the program. We expect them to sit in these closed sessions to the early hours of yeah. Sunday morning. Over to you. All right. Um, perhaps finally, are you hearing any whispers that there might even be court action uh, waiting for the party? Well, from the disgruntled members, obviously, yeah. Peter, they are threatening that they could challenge the outcomes. Mm. But uh, it doesn't seem to be a concern. It wasn't a concern for the steering committee at that stage. Um, our understanding is that the processes that they're doing now do not affect um, any of the outcomes. But um, that is something that could unfold. Uh, we don't know at this stage yet, but we'll keep monitoring the situation in, in Ikuruleni. All right. Kenny, I hope you've had something to eat. I've got a feeling... This is going to be a really long weekend for you. <laughs> Thanks so much indeed for joining us. <laughs> All right, that's uh, our reporter, Kani Mapanga, speaking to us uh, at the uh, Kuruleni um, ANC uh, Regional uh, Elective Conference taking place at the Karas Indaba, actually north of Johannesburg.